Hello and welcome to Spring Semester 2022. Uh, my name is Margaret Hankinson and I am a professor of political science at UWM at Waukesha and I'm going to be your instructor this semester for Civil Liberties. Um, so this short video is just designed to introduce you to the course and talk a little bit about what you're going to be learning about this semester. So what are civil liberties and what will you be learning this semester? Well, civil liberties are defined as the individual rights and personal freedoms that are guaranteed by the United States Constitution. Um, and here are some examples when we're talking about personal liberties. Here are some examples of what are some of the personal liberties you're going to be learning about this semester. Uh, so take, for example, religious freedoms. Um, religious freedoms are the freedom to practice your religious beliefs, to put your religious um, values and beliefs into action, to meet with others and to pray with them if you want to um, craft and construct church, churches. Um, all of those are examples of religious freedoms. However, religious freedoms is also the freedom not to practice religion, um, that you have the freedom to be free from government telling you that you must go and worship and that you must pray. That's an example of a civil liberty. Another example of a civil liberty it, and something you're going to be learning about this semester is freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Um, when we think about freedom of speech, it's really just the right that people have to, to express your ideas, um, what your values are, either your social or political values um, and the opinions that you have and that you can express those freely without the fear of government reprisal. Uh, the right to privacy is another good example of a civil liberty and something you're going to be learning about this semester. Um, the right to privacy is the ability to like basically live your life and have control over your body without the fear that government is going to intrude upon that privacy um, without some sort of justification. Um, so those are just a few of the examples of civil liberties you're gonna be learning about during the course of the semester. But there are other ones we're gonna be learning about too. And you'll get a sense of that when you take a look at the syllabus and um, the course calendar for this semester. Now, one way of thinking about civil liberties is to think about them as personal rights and freedoms. And that's the way we were just sort of talking about them. Um, but another way of thinking about um, civil liberties is to think about civil, civil liberties as um, uh, the restraints that are placed on the actions of government, okay? And, and so along these lines, a lot of times I tell my students that when you're learning about civil liberties and thinking about civil liberties, that it helps to think about civil liberties as the thou shall not. In other words, that we have a listing in the Bill of Rights um, that basically tells government what it's prohibited from doing, the thou shall nots, the things that it cannot do. And by telling government what it can't do, space is opened up for what people can do, okay? And so civil liberties are that personal freedom um, that's found in that space when we tell government that it can't do certain things. Um, so for example, let's take the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights. And um, while there are many liberties within the First Amendment that you're gonna be learning about this semester, one has to do with um, speech. And so the First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. So basically what the First Amendment is doing is it's telling Congress and other governmental institutions what it can't do. In this case, it can't abridge your speech. And in so doing um, that it creates personal freedoms for the people. And in this case, the freedom to express yourself without fear of government censorship. And so that's a good example of thinking about civil liberties as not just personal freedoms, but also restraints that we place on government, telling them what they can't do in order to create um, personal freedoms for the people that live here. Um, so this semester, we're gonna be uh, learning about many things. Um, one thing you're gonna be learning about is, um, you're gonna be learning about the United States Constitution. And in particular, you're gonna be learning about the Bill of Rights. Um, and the Bill of Rights are the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. So you'll be learning about that. You'll be learning about why there are amendments to the Constitution, why they weren't, you know, um, aren't a part of the actual body or the articles of the Constitution. And we're gonna be learning about if the Bill of Rights applies just to the actions of the federal government or whether it applies to the actions of all entities of government. Um, it, the Bill of Rights is important because it's in the Bill of Rights that we find civil liberties. 
Um, you're also going to be learning about the structure and process of the Supreme Court of the United States. Um, as you're going to find out this semester, and as many of you probably already know, um, the Supreme Court plays a very important role in defining, expanding, and sometimes contracting civil liberties in the United States. Um, so as you're going to learn this semester, uh, you know, uh, that when a person feels that their rights have been unconstitutionally trampled upon by the government, um, they'll sometimes ask the federal courts to decide whether or not their rights have indeed been violated. And the Supreme Court, as the court, the so-called court of last re resort, it has the final say um, as to the constitutionality of law. And the decision of the Supreme Court can have a significant impact on our lives, on a whole host of matters, but in particular when it comes to our personal freedoms. So whether or not you can own and carry a handgun, um, whether or not you can marry the person you want to marry, the partner of your choice, um, whether or not you have a right to counsel, whether you can afford it or not when you're tried for a crime, whether or not you have the right to burn the American flag as a way of expressing yourself, all of that is determined by the decisions of the Supreme Court. And um, they, they have the final say, but as you're gonna find out this semester, that oftentimes the Supreme Court will, will reinterpret the way it thinks about the right to bear arms or the right to um, personal autonomy or the right to counsel, et cetera. Um, so, you, you know, you will, so that you'll also be learning about uh, um, how our understanding of personal rights has changed over time and how our understanding and the court's understanding of personal liberty has, 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 has evolved over time. Uh, and so in order to learn about these changes uh, that you're gonna be reading Supreme Court opinions this, this semester uh, and writing case briefs that basically summarize these, these um, the decisions that the Supreme Court make. That's another thing that you're gonna be learning about this semester. Now, I, I always tell students that while reading, uh, learning that you're gonna be reading Supreme Court decisions may sound sort of daunting, a little bit scary, um, that really the vast majority of Supreme Court decisions are fairly easy to read and follow. Um, and that's in part because the court is writing for the people. Um, since the decisions of the Supreme Court can have a tremendous impact on people's lives, it's important that people can read and understand and follow what the court is saying. So I think you're really going to enjoy reading the court decisions this semester. Okay, so um, there's other things we're gonna be doing. I mean, we're gonna have a lot of um, uh, online discussions on um, uh, issues uh, regarding personal freedoms, civil liberties. Um, you're, we're reading a really cool book called The Most Dangerous Branch about the Supreme Court and how the power of the Supreme Court has changed over time. Um, and I think that you'll, um, this is one of my favorite classes to teach. So I think you're going to find that, that you're going to learn a lot and you'll really end up really loving um, uh, reading about and expanding your knowledge of uh, civil liberties. Okay, so that's a brief uh, overview of this course and what it's about. I'm super excited to get started this semester and I can't wait to meet all of you. Okay, so thanks a lot for listening and I'll talk to you again soon.